Hey guys, welcome back to California Cooking. I'm really excited about today's show because first up, I'm talking to a chef born and raised here in Los Angeles, and he's made quite the name for himself because he's hipped up Thai cuisine. Then I'm getting in the kitchen with one of my best friends. Cammie and I have been friends for 20 years, and she's cooking up her famous Texas chili. And finally, Christina Pascucci takes us to a place serving up the most amazing tacos and burritos on homemade tortillas. First up, I get in the kitchen with chef Chris Yen Bam Room. He grew up working at his family's Thai restaurant here in LA, and then he decided to go off on his own with a more rock and roll approach. He shows me how to make Thai noodles with Langer's pastrami. Take a look. Hi, Chef Chris. Hi, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, welcome. You, you are not afraid of color. I am not. This I love is, that about you. This is the vibe, this is the vibe that I want. High energy, bright colors, but it's supposed to feel like you're just going over to your buddy's house for, for a dinner, for a dinner party, and you're right. just going to have fun any night of the week. You Except know? the food's the top, top notch. Well, yeah, I mean, that goes without saying. <laughs> it's gotta be, yeah. You grew up here in Southern California. Grew up here in LA, yeah. Right, so your family had a restaurant on Sunset Boulevard. It opened in 82, the year wow. I was born. Wow. But when I was like five or six, coming to the restaurant after school, I would go into the kitchen, I'd see what grandma was up to, and that's where I started to kind of learn how to right. cook. And you didn't know it at the time, but you I were learning. I didn't know it, and yeah. I was like, okay, this is this would one day be something for me. Right. But I didn't. I wasn't aware at the time. I believe your father had said, okay, I want you to take over the family restaurant. Yeah. And you're like, okay, you're in your 20s. Right. I, you're like, I can do this. I had all the, the bravado, the right. cockiness of a 25 year old. And, and then when I took what it happened? over, I, I quickly, within the span of a few months, ran it into the ground. This was the family restaurant, meaning that the whole family depended on right. it. Right. And then about a year and a half later, the space next door became available, and that's what eventually became Night Market. And my thought was, you know, here's a blank slate. I'm gonna try it again. It, it can't be any worse than what I just did. And it quickly got worse. <laughs> and so it got worse before it got better. Your idea of Thai food, you said, you know, this restaurant isn't necessarily a Thai restaurant, but it's an LA restaurant yeah. because LA represents so many things. When we started, it was super important for me to do everything like the old way, yeah. the, the old country way. The more I did that, the more I realized I didn't really care at that point about making these facsimiles of things that exist like 10,000 miles away. Mm -hmm. um, it just wasn't relevant. I was like, well, we're here in LA, we're feeding LA people. There's different tastes, there's different vibes, there's different energy. And that's when I started to loosen up a little bit. We're doing some stuff that's not even really Thai and okay. you'll taste some of this stuff yeah. where it's like, it's got maybe a kernel of something yeah. Thai, but it's become this other, it's just like night market food. What is a dish that puts you on the map? Do you, is there one? Yeah, it's one that we're gonna taste today. Okay. It's a crispy rice salad. Mm -hmm. It's a salad for people who don't even wanna eat salad. You know, it's right. like, it's a flavor bomb, it's texture, huh. it's good. What about a dish on there that is authentically, you know, grandma or your family that mm -hmm. you didn't really tweak too much? There's one dish that we're also gonna taste today that's I would say 90% grandma, okay. and then I had to just throw in a little LA twist. And yeah. it's, it's the pat kimao, and it's, it translates to drunken noodles, big flavor. But what we do, instead of just throwing in like pork or mm -hmm. chicken or whatever, I wanted to make it like this kind of ode to LA dish. So we use, I used to go to Langer's, the deli downtown, and, uh, and get their pastrami, yeah. and I would like throw it in our pat kimao, just really? as like, a, like an off menu treat. Yeah and we actually started doing it. So we wow. get that iconic pastrami and it's sort of like, you know, our LA thing. You know? That's amazing. So, yeah. Um, speaking of noodles, I heard that you called Gwyneth Paltrow your noodle bag. I did. I <laughs> did, and it's true because she's, you know, she's like, she's she's a total boss, you know? She yeah. goes in any, I like the way she approaches, you know, her company and uh -huh. then the way she works and she's just completely fearless. And does know? she love your noodles? She loves our noodles so much that she asked me to come on her show and, and, and cook some noodles with her, and we did. I wanna see you in action. What cool. are, so this dish is, it's This with is the, the drunken noodles, yeah, the pad ki mao with the, um, the pastrami. So this is our ode to LA. Sort of throw in the ingredients at different times. Okay. 
Red bell you can pepper. Here's just how hot it is, yeah. Oh my gosh. A little bell pepper, throw in our noodles. These are rice noodles, yeah. That's sugar right there. Okay. This is a little stir fry sauce right here. Okay. And this is the good part right here. This is garlic and chili. I'm gonna put all of it. Do it. That's that's the flavor right there. This is a fairly spicy mm -hmm. thing. You know, it's I feel like a lot of people come to Night Market for that big flavor, for the spice. With a little bit of fish sauce. Okay. And our Thai basil. Mm-hmm. That's what's so great about Thai food. It's spicy, sweet, oh, vinegary. Yeah. I mean, it has it's all the notes. It's got a nice balance of yeah. flavor, for sure. These are green peppercorns, so young okay. peppercorns that are brined. Yeah. Gives it just like an extra little dimension. That's it. This, that's it. Just two minutes, ready to go. That looks awesome. Mmm, that's good. So good, Chris. This is good. This cool. is really you good. You ready for more? Uh huh. This is one of those dishes that's it's pretty much the opposite of what we just made, which yeah. is like cooked in the wok, high heat, you know, it's a lot of technique involved. We are gonna do the crispy rice salad. Mm, the the salad. salad everyone orders when they come to Night Market. With this, it's just like a simple toss salad. Right. It's just that it's Thai. A little sugar, there's a little fish sauce. Okay. Do a little bit of chili. And this is basically our sauce. And we're gonna dump in some onion. Yeah. A little bit of cilantro, scallion. I'm gonna toss this just to coat it. Okay. And we're essentially gonna finish it off with some raw ginger mm. and peanuts. And then we're gonna dump in our rice. And how do you crisp up your rice? So do you just put it in the fryer? Or? Yeah, but yeah. it's it's a little bit of a process. So we take rice, just like steamed rice you would eat with your dinner, uh -huh. and then we um, we dry it out, yeah. and then we marinate it, and then we throw it in the fryer. Oh, wow. And you were saying this one became a vegan dish, but originally, this has a lot of sausage and exactly. it's a bit heavier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you lightened it up. So this is sort of the light version. This one is in the cookbook, uh -huh. or cookbook, the night market cookbook. Yeah. Food to facilitate drinking and fun having amongst <laughs> friends. That's what it's called, actually. I like that. This took two minutes, not even. And what I keep hearing through Chris's explanation of his restaurant is fun. The word fun is oh, yeah. used many times, it's and fun. I like that. Our this salad. is our crispy rice salad. That's our crispy rice salad with the peanuts, ginger, ginger chili, lime juice. This is like mm. the kind of refreshing. This is crunchy, spicy, and very few vegetables, which is a great salad in my book. Exactly. That is so good. Loosely a salad. Well done, chef. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you so much. This is so much fun. Thanks for being here. Chef Chris is so much fun, and those drunken noodles with pastrami, crazy good. But if you want to see more of Chef Chris's specialties, like his out-of-this-world chicken sandwich, go to our Instagram, at KTLA California Cooking. Coming up, a tiny taqueria in downtown LA is serving up the most amazing tacos and burritos. Christina Pascucci takes us to this must-try spot. Plus, does Levi like it? I'm making him a sweet potato shepherd's pie. We'll find out if he likes it. But first, my good friend Cammie joins me in the kitchen to show me how to make her award-winning chili. That's coming up next. It's that time of year when a good cup of chili just hits the spot. And I knew my friend Cammie was good in the kitchen, but I had no idea her chili was famous. Take a look. I'm wearing my sweatpants for you. I love it. We're making chili. It's football oh, season. This is fun. my bestie, Cammie. We are friends for now almost 20 years. Yes. And we've we've been through a lot of different things together. We have. Because I met Cammie when you were just a teenager. You were I was, 16. I was, yeah. She lives in Texas. I do. So we met in Florida. Yes. And we get to see each other, you know, once or twice a year. Yes. Cammie was coming to visit and she said, um, 
let's cook together. And I said, yes, and you won a chili cook-off in Texas. I did. At your company, and I said, Cami, that is what we're making. Tell me everything as I chop onion to get ready so, for this chili. So, um, we live in Houston, and yeah. Go Texan Day is a really big deal in Go Houston. Go Texan Day? Yes. What is that? So, Go Texan Day for some of us um, is about chili cook-off. So, I won this competition, and it's actually turkey chili, and nobody knew the difference. Um, wow. But it's super simple and really easy and kid-friendly. Okay. Before we go back and start the chili, this what's great about chili, I think, is you just dump stuff. You do. Right? So talk me through some of your so ingredients. It's super simple, yeah. all the things you would think go in chili. Um, so chili powder, mm -hmm. um, smoked paprika gives it that rich, it's cooked all day yeah. taste, even though it's just been maybe 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Cumin. And then um, you can use either seasoned salt or like a spicy Creole Tony Satchery yeah, yeah. seasoning and give it a little bit more flavor. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously we've got the garlic and onion. And the most important part and the most delicious part are the chipotle peppers. That's always adobo. in my fridge. So this might have a little kick and you also have green chilies. Yes, the green chilies. And those are typically pretty mild, but they give it a really kind of smoky flavor or yeah. something a little bit different. And then we've got diced fire roasted tomatoes. Reg okay. Regular work fine. Um, I use beef broth in mm -hmm. mine. And then beans. Beans. And you know what, when you told me your grocery list of what yes. you needed, you said Fritos. And I love Fritos. I haven't had a Frito in a long time. But Texans eat Fritos with their chili. We do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Award-winning Texas chili is happening as we speak. So we yes. started with the onion, we about did. a quarter of a chopped onion, Correct. and a, I put a little avocado oil in the Perfect. pan. I got the dark meat turkey. I love dark meat. Because it has a little more flavor. Yeah, you still feel like it's healthy, but it definitely has a richer taste. Yeah, so you've browned the meat, and then what are you gonna do next? What's our next? So next, um, we're gonna add a little bit of garlic. And I think why we're friends, Cammie, is you said you don't measure any. I don't. <laughs> I, don't. I actually had to really go back and make it yeah. and calculate it for the recipe. You now, got your spices. We're gonna go ahead and add quite a bit okay. of chili powder. Just to use this. all of it. And the thing about chili powder, it's not spicy necessarily, right. it's just deep. It deep. has a deep yes. pepper flavor. Exactly. And then um, I add smoked paprika, which I don't think is very hot either, but I typically like that flavor that it gives it, that little bit of sweet heat. And then paprika and then a little bit of cumin. So this is something that not everyone adds, but I think cumin is really oh, um, yeah. a great addition. And the other thing that's so good about toasting, basically you're warming mm -hmm. the spices yes. because they they get dormant in the right. in the jar. Yes, and so I like to season the meat and the onions and let it kind of soak in for yeah. a little bit so the meat has a really good flavor to it. And then we add in fire roasted right. diced tomatoes. Are we doing the whole can? Do yes, you think? the whole can with juices and everything. And then to that, I would add just about half half a can of tomato sauce if okay. you're doing a big can. Yeah. Oh, and half. if it cooks down too much, you add, add more. more. Just save it, yeah. yep. I like to add about two tablespoons of tomato paste, so mm -hmm. it kind of thickens it up. I do a little bit of beef broth. And yep. how much of the broth? Just um, a, little yep, a little bit, about a quarter cup. I will add the chipotle peppers. Now this is where we have to be Very a careful. little careful. A little goes a long way. What do you think? I would start small. You can always okay. add more later. We'll start there. And then go ahead and oh, jump the in. the dice cream chili. Dice cream chili. So th yeah. these aren't really that spicy, the dice cream chili. They're right? not, no. Um, and, and then I would go ahead and put a little bit of the salt. Mm -hmm. And then beans? dump in the beans. So I would just cover it and let it go. And the longer it goes, the more the flavors come out. And then I would adjust in about 10, 15 minutes and check and see if you want a little more heat or a little more salt. My favorite thing about chili are the toppings. I eat it for the toppings. So Me I too. think I got everything you asked for. We got okay. the cheese, the yep. avocado lime, sour, sour cream. cream. Yes. And since we're waiting for the chili to cook, I, I see a half open bottle of, Amazing. of wine. So I think we should just, that's the thing about waiting <laughs> for the chili to cook and cooking with a friend. Yes. And it, wine goes with everything. It kind of does. Cheers, Cam. Cheers. Okay, so cheddar cheese. Yes. So we're gonna top the chili with that. Yes. Some avocado, and you do your sour cream okay. thing. Tell me what you do with that. So it's just 
sour cream. Mm -hmm. You take a big kind of hunk of sour cream. Yeah. And then um, a little pinch of salt and the juice of um, about oh, like half that. to one lime, depending yeah. on how much you To give you it like. a little tang. Yeah, a little tang. And it gives it sort of a cool contrast yeah. <laughs> to that really potentially spicy chili or semi-spicy chili. Okay, we've got our avocado, yep. our cheese. And this is what's so great, you just put the pot out and everybody, everybody helps does their themselves. Own thing. Yep. Oh, we can't, we I'm ate half the bag. We shouldn't have opened them before our chili was done. Cammy, your chili looks perfect. Yay! It and comes out perfect every time. You can't mess it up, I promise. Okay, we have to taste. Tommy, okay. we have to call Tommy in to, as our what? taste tester. Hey, Tommy. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Are you great. impressed with your yeah. wife? Always. <laughs> Let me scoop you up. Oh, wait, I didn't do Fritos at the bottom. You can do Fritos in the bottom. Okay. I'm a Fritos on the top kind of girl I'm anyway. I'm Fritos so. on the bottom. And I do yeah. cheese at the top. Yes, everybody yeah. has their There's own way. There's a system. There's a system. I'm gonna do cheese next, next. Yeah. so it melts. So it melts. Mm -hmm. Little bit of avocado. I'm gonna, Tommy, let's switch. I'll even do a little squirt of lime. Yeah. We're tasting. Okay. It's hot. Ooh, it's smoking. Mm -hmm. It's good. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Just as good in California as it is in Texas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think, Tommy, she deserves a smooch for this chili. <laughs> chili kiss. Thanks, Cam. Yeah, I'm so excited. Love Thanks you. for having me. Love you, too. I'm making this again. It was so much fun cooking in the kitchen with my friend Cammie, and her chili is so good. We lived together for years. She was holding out on me. She never made that chili. Thanks, Cammie. Coming up, mouth-watering tacos and burritos on homemade flour tortillas. Christina Pascucci takes us to a taqueria that everyone needs to visit. Plus, I'm trying a lighter take on a shepherd's pie. We're gonna find out if Levi likes it. That's coming up. LA is filled with amazing taco spots, but one place in downtown LA is creating quite the buzz. Christina Pascucci checks out Sonora Town. Jess, coming to you from downtown from a little taqueria called Sonora Town. This place is so cool for so many reasons, but perhaps most of all, their decades old family tradition and the tortillas they have are something like you won't see anywhere else. And what they do to get these tortillas, you won't believe it. I want one of everything. I want a taco, caramelo, quesadilla, Lorenza. Beautiful, miss. And what kind of meat would you like to Chimichanga? How do you see it? That That's one? a chimichanga. You got it right. Oh, yeah. I'm with Jennifer, who is the owner of the restaurant. You and your boyfriend both own it. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting because there's so much history with your own family. It's a decades old tradition. The state of Sonora is right on the flip side of the border from Arizona. Northern Mexico is known for preferring flour tortillas to corn and ranch style cuisine. So cooking over live fire and cooking over mesquite. Our specific tacos that we serve here are based on a family recipe. So what you do to get these tortillas is nothing short of remarkable. Ridiculous, I would say. Yes, <laughs> you go twice a month, every month mm -hmm. to Mexico. And I bring flour over the border because we haven't been able to find a brand of flour that makes more delicious tortillas than the brand that uh, Tio grew up using and his mom and his grandmother. What? do you think makes the taste of these tortillas amazing? Because you've won awards for them. We won best tortilla in LA according to KCRW a little while back. The texture is important. Sonoran tortillas are, they're very thin, delicate, almost more like bed sheets. This is the traditional way to dress the tacos with a little bit of an avocado puree and then salsa taquera. Your tacos are always gonna be served with cebollitas that have been grilled and rabanos. So it's a little different than what a lot of people here are used to. So we use costilla de res, which is gonna be short rib. Uh, so a really nice, fatty, oh well-marbled piece of meat. But here- There are no words for that one. <laughs> oh, I'm so stoked you like it, yeah. And so we don't need to marinate because it is such a high quality piece of meat. We just add a little salt and then put it on the grill. We use a live mesquite fire, so it's gonna perfume the meat also. 
So the chibis are made with a guisado inside of them, so a stewed sort of meat instead. And so we do all of that in rice cookers. We slow roast the guisados because we don't have any oh. other method of cooking besides the mesquite grill. So we've had to get really crafty about what we do. There's no sacrifice in the flavor. You're really gonna like this too. Do you wanna eat one of these with me? Absolutely. Okay. That chibis are, are juicy little guys. Cheers. Yeah. Ooh, yep. Don't get all up in my face with this one. That was an explosion of juice mm -hmm. and so many flavors. It's delicious. Mm, I'm so happy you like it. Mm. I'm really grateful for what we do have here. Anything else, anything that happens from here forward is just way more than I ever would have, could have even imagined. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I want to give you a hug. Thanks so for great. coming. I appreciate it. It's delicious. Now I'm going to sneak back there yeah, and steal some more food. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to check out Sonora Town next time you're in downtown LA. Thanks, Christina. Okay, on to does Levi like it? I'm a big fan of shepherd's pie, especially this time of year, but I decided to take a lighter approach sweet potatoes and turkey. But does he like it? Take a look. Please, can you eat a little bite? At least some broccoli. I want to eat dessert. What? I want to eat dessert. You want to eat dessert? Yeah. Okay, but how are you going to eat dessert if you didn't eat any dinner? <laughs> Do you want dessert? Yeah. What kind? The one that I buy. No, the, the ice cream. The only thing that I had yesterday. Well, he didn't like it. You know what? My kid doesn't like mashed potatoes of any kind. I thought I could trick him with those sweet potatoes. But if you want to get the recipe, because it is quite delicious, go to our Instagram page at KTLA California Cooking. That does it for us. But if you want to hear more of my conversation with Chef Chris from Night Market and hear about the influential people that helped make his restaurant a success, check out my California Cooking podcast. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Ready? Yep. Yep. And since we're waiting for the chili to cook, I, I see a half open bottle of amazing of wine. <laughs> and I think why we're friends, Cammy, is you said you don't measure. We're cozy. <laughs> I eat like this. <laughs>